She finally made it here to my YouTube channel and we are gonna test her. Come on, let's get started. So yesterday I assembled this barbecue and that already told me this is a great grill. This is a great Weber barbecue. And the funny thing is there is a lot of Weber heritage still in this barbecue. It's not like they threw every design they ever made out of the window. No, this is still a truly a Weber barbecue. The ash pan and vent control, it still looks exactly the same. They even have the connection here, which are for the, for the feet, for instance, for your Weber kettle, they are still there. They really kept their original design features. And as you can see, she's pretty big. She is 61 centimeters across. So you can compare this to having a big green egg XL Kamado style or a, a Kamado Big Joe or whatever ceramic grill you're uh, comparing it to. Hi kitty. The cat likes the grill as well, or at least what comes off the grill. The main feature of this grill is the insulation. You got an insulated hood and you got an insulated kettle. So here you have about an inch thick insulation. You got your gasket and this gasket is made of stainless steel and that's just perfect. That's what we're looking for in a modern gasket. They've put a nice big dial on this so you can clearly see the temperature. You got your top vent right here, which allow you to open like this keep it completely opened or fine tune your temperature with the slide. They have big wheels which make for easy transportation. This barbecue is light compared to ceramic grills and that's an important feature as well. And I think one of the things that stand out immediately is this. What is this attached to that? Well this is a gas ignition and it will start up a gas burner inside of the grill to help you start up your charcoal. I really love this idea because I've been looking for ways to start up my charcoal without creating a lot of smoke. And this is a great way to do it. Now if you take a look at the back, Yes, it is that easy to turn around. If you look, it's spring loaded. And so that means that all of the weight from the lid is reduced by the springs. So now let's take a look inside this grill and see how they set it up. Of course you have your grill grate on top with the gourmet system. You can open it up from the side to add charcoal or smoking wood. And here is where it gets more interesting. So this is the base where you can put your charcoal if you want to dye a grill. And look at the distance to the grill grate. That's a really short distance, so that will make for excellent searing. And they got a real high quality charcoal grate at the bottom, real thick at the lowest setting. You have a lot of distance between your grill grate and your charcoal. So you can also grill like this, but have more distance. And what that distance does for grilling your food, it creates more even cooking. And when you want to go totally indirect, they have created this base, which fits in the ring. It's like a shield, it's like a deflector. And it makes sure that you don't get any direct heat. But what they also did is made these hinges, which will allow you to add charcoal and add smoking wood. So this will give you maximum flexibility. And it's still insulated because as you can see, it's about a centimeter thick. So this is the way you would set it up for smoking. And I think it looks really good. Okay, it's time to fire it up. I'm going to load it up with charcoal. And because we're running some tests, I'm gonna fully load it up. In this case, I really want it fully loaded to see what it can do, how long it can run. While we are waiting for this grill to start up, I got some exciting news because besides lending me this grill to make this video, Weber also gave me the opportunity to get you guys one of these. And um, I've got five of these that I can give away. These are epic. I've been using them for a long, long time. I can only give these away in the Netherlands and in Luxembourg and in Belgium. 
So if you're living in Luxembourg, Belgium and the Netherlands, you're a lucky guy. The rest, I'm sorry, maybe in the future I get an opportunity to give away these as well to the rest of the world. What you gotta do is leave in the comment Weber. You gotta leave a thumbs up to the video. And of course you need to be subscribed to this channel. While you're subscribing to my channel right now, make sure you click that notification button as well because YouTube doesn't send you a message. Even though you're subscribed, they just forget about it. Make sure to hit that notification notification button as well. Well, we're just over the 10 minute mark and I think we can clearly establish this thing has started up. I turned off the gas and it still keeps coming. Temperatures are around 100 degrees Celsius. And once it reaches 110 degrees Celsius, which is 225 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to try and get it stable. It's been about 30 minutes and it's set up the way I wanted to. And what I discovered is that the temperature on the thermometer on the lid is almost the same as the temperature on the eye grill. And that's something that you rarely see. So we set the thermometer probe up to uh, measure at grill grade level. And normally the lid is about 20 to 30 degrees higher than that. But here they adjusted the thermometer to measure the same temperature. Or what it would be even better, we got such an equal temperature in all of the dome. That will be perfect. And in the meantime, I've been preparing 10 kilograms of spare ribs because I want to see the capacity of this thing. Can it handle 10 kilograms of spare ribs? Does it fit in there? Well, we're going to find out right now. Well, as you can see, it easily fits. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 ribs. 15 slabs of ribs, people, and it easily fits. And voila! The ribs that we put on are now in the last phase. They've been on the grill smoking away for two hours, then another two hours in the tin foil. And then finally, I put them on here, sauce them up with their own juices, and they just look fantastic. They're already full of the bone ready. So they just need about 20 minutes or so just to get that stickiness in there, and then they're ready to come off. Wow. And the Weber Summit charcoal performed like a dream all that time. It was super stable, really easy to control. I opened the lid, it came back up to temperature, and it just stayed throughout the cook. I was in full control, and I love that. Well, the ribs turned out amazing. They turned out so juicy and nice smoke ring, and they're, they're just perfect. Hmm. The meat comes clean off the bone. Well, this thing is doing a great job at making ribs. But let's take a look inside and how much charcoal is left. Well, look at that. It just burned about, I think, maybe one third of the fuel. So that means that of all this fuel, we have could have gone at least for 15 hours and maybe more. And that's a great job. That's really fantastic. So this means that the barbecue is well insulated and it retains its heat. So let's go through this grill again, because there are some notable things to say about this. Of course, I got in my mind the Weber Charcoal 57 kettle grill when I think about Weber, but this is a different product. This really is a Kamado style barbecue and it performs like a Kamado style barbecue. On some points, it outperforms the Kamado style barbecue. And this is something that I want to get into you with you guys, because Weber has a long history on engineering great barbecues and they use their knowledge not to just build a Kamado style Weber grill, but they improved on it. If you look at the ventilation down below, you see that they adjusted that and they made a small change to the hole, which allowed you to go really precise on the amount of air that you let into your summit charcoal grill. This is where you see that they really have thought about this in a manner with a lot of care and a lot of attention to detail. Also for the insulation of the kettle itself, you can reach underneath it, which means they let the hot air insulate the barbecue. And that's fantastic. They don't use wool or steel or they don't fill it up with anything or they don't close it off underneath. They let it open. And these things make the performance of this grill even better than that I expected initially. Of course, they added luxury to it as well. Starting your barbecue up with a gas starter, that's fantastic. That makes this grill really easy to use. 
It's very stable and the wheels allow it to go on almost any surface. That in combination with how light it is, again, perfect, well done Weber. So I thought that I finished this video yesterday, but it just kept on running. I, I, what did I put in? This is a um, five kilogram bag of charcoal, of which now maybe two kilograms left. So we put about three kilograms of charcoal in here. And we started this barbecue at 11 o'clock in the morning yesterday. And now it's, it's 10 o'clock and the temperature has finally gone below 80 degrees Celsius, which is around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This probably just died because the ash clogged the bottom and it really, really kept on burning for that long. And that's just insane. I really love that. The quality of the build of this product is really great. And I can imagine if you drop this kind of barbecue, it doesn't break in 10,000 pieces. And the fact that they put in a hole where you can put your temperature controller in. You know, one of these vents to let you control the temperature of your barbecue. How cool is that? I've never seen that on a Weber grill before, but it's fantastic. I love that they did this. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure had a lot of fun making it and uh, hope to see you guys next time. Cheers.